the introduction. My name is Franco Lanfour. I'm the founder of VARS, Virtual and Augmented Reality Solutions. And today I'm going to show you the potential of extended realities. But first, I would like to know who of you knows what extended realities are. Can you please raise your hand? Okay, so for the ones of you that don't know, extended realities is a term that refers to all the different kinds of digital realities, like for example, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, and so on. Virtual reality, or VR, is a computer generated virtual environment which allows you to dive into a virtual world and see and experience things that are, will not be possible, for example, in the real reality. Augmented reality combines the real world with the virtual world. And as he mentioned, one of the most famous examples of augmented reality is the Pokemon Go app, where you were able to see these Pokemons in your surroundings and even catch them. Another great example of augmented reality is the IKEA app. With this one, you were able to see how furniture from IKEA could look like, for example, in your room. So as you can see, extended reality really gives you the possibility to see things beyond the real world and to experience things beyond the real world. And if you look at it the other way around, you're as well uh, you're, you're as well allowed to use extended realities in order to show things beyond reality and to develop experiences that would not be possible in the real world. So I, this is something I actually learned back then at the university. I studied architecture here at the Technical University in Vienna. And besides learning how to design and how to plan buildings, in architecture, we learned as well how to communicate and how to show our designs. And there's what I first got in contact with extended realities. In architecture, you can use virtual reality or augmented reality to show your clients how, how the buildings are going to look like in the future so that they can understand better and take better decisions, for example. And besides that, at the university, I had the chance as well to learn a little bit about Vienna's history and history of architecture. And I'm, I come from Guatemala, so for me it was really amazing to see these old plants and old representations of Vienna. And I was really happy to learn, for example, that Vienna was uh, a military camp during the Roman Empire called Vindovona, or that, for example, the Viennese Hofburg used to be a medieval castle where the royal family of the Austrian Empire used to live for a lot of time. So after learning all this and getting all this information, whenever I was walking through the streets of Vienna with my friends, I was always trying to tell them how cool and how different Vienna used to look like in the past. But using only my words wasn't actually the best idea to, to give them this vision I had. So everything changed one day when I was walking through the Stubentor subway station and I saw this model. At first, I didn't quite understood what this model was about. I just saw the Stefan's dome in the middle and then some spikes around it. And then I turned around and I saw this uh, billboard with information that says that the Stubentor is actually uh, one of the oldest parts of the, sea, of the fortress that surrounded the city of Vienna a long time ago. And in that moment, all the images I learned at the university and I saw at museums came to my mind. And I discovered as well that, that this wall was actually part of the remains of the city fortress. And it was, this was something really, really exciting for me. And I remember I had one picture in my mind, it was this one, that I, I saw at the university, which shows how Stubentor actually looked like around 150 years ago. And I actually went the other side of the street in order to try to align this picture I had in my phone with the real reality in order to kind of get a better idea of how it, would, how it looked like in the past. And in that moment, I got the idea of reconstructing the whole picture and showing it through augmented reality in three dimensions to my friends, for example, in order to, 
yeah, to explain them how different and how, how cool Vienna used to look like in the past. So it was that, that exact moment that kind of changed everything for me. And so I came to the idea of using augmented reality as a visualization tool in order to show Vienna's history. And the first thing I did was I went back to the university again and enrolled in every single course that had to do something with uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. I even took extra courses online in order to learn as much as possible of this technology. And the more I was learning, the more I, was, uh, the more I knew why it was so difficult to create. I also looked as well if there was already some examples of people doing this, and I found actually nothing. There are, are a couple of examples uh, of people with, with the same idea and the same concept, but they were not using 100% uh, the advantages of augmented reality. So I said to myself, if nobody's doing it, then I have to do it. And so it's how this project started. And yeah, I started to, to do a lot of research and I went to the museum, to the Vienna Museum, and I found these amazing models of the city of Vienna, which sadly I think you cannot see anymore right now because they are renewing the, the museum. But they show pretty cool and pretty detailed how Vienna used to look like during different ages. On the, right one, on the left one, you can see, for example, how Vienna used to look like in the Middle Ages. And on the other one, you can see how Vienna looked like during the 19th century when the fortress was still there. So I started uh, yeah, at the university learning a lot and after some time and some hard work and some testing, I got the possibility uh, to, sh to solve the problem and to, to be able to show and to put some digital objects on a place in order to realize my idea. So after, after having the technical solution, I decided to to choose a couple of places where I can do a demo in order to show my idea. And first I chose the Hofburg. First, because I think it's really interesting to, to see that the same building that is standing right there, right now, kind of respects the same geometry of the castle that was standing there during the Middle Ages. So this is something I found really interesting. And then the other place I chose for my demo, for my testing, was the Stephansplatz. Probably some of you may know the Birgilkapelle, this chapel um, that you can access actually through the subway station. Uh, over, the, over this Birgilkapelle, there was another church called the Maria Magdalena Kapelle, the one you can see right there. And there is as well a lot of information about it. And I actually found really interesting to see how Stephansplatz would actually look like today with this church, and I de decided to use this as well as an example for my, for my project. So after choosing both places, I started uh, modeling, I started getting all the information I needed in order to reconstruct the buildings, and I did the demos after some time of hard work and testing. And when I finished, I really wanted, all the pe I went, I really wanted to share my project with as many people as possible, but because of the technology I was using, it was not possible just to upload, for example, the app I did to the App Store or to the Play Store so that everybody can, could download it. And so I decided to, to look for a tourism agency that could help me distribute this idea. And there's where I found Archeonau. Archeonau is a really amazing tourism agency. They do culture and treasure hunts. And I showed Archeonau's founder uh, my project and my idea and she showed me actually what they were doing at Archeonau. And we found both projects really interesting and we thought it was a perfect match to integrate augmented reality into these treasure hunts in order to give people the, yeah, the experience of really exploring Vienna's history through augmented reality. And the day after we met, we decided to start working in what today is Vienna's first augmented reality tour, which you can actually book right now over the augmented over the Archeona website and here you can see a small trailer of our of our tour
So what we did in this augmented reality tour is um, we created uh, yeah, a retzel, a treasure hunt. At the beginning, you get a folder with information and questions about Vienna's history. And you have to go to Vienna to different locations in order to answer these questions. And you have to really explore through augmented reality, for example, old buildings that no longer stay there, but you're going to see through augmented reality. You have to explore them in order to, to find the answers to the, to the questions. So we find pretty cool that we can actually use augmented reality in order to teach uh, history, the history of Vienna. And this is something I think it's really valuable. It is as well worth to mention that during the whole development uh, phase, I wanted to share all my tests and all my experiments with as many people as possible. And there my girlfriend came to the idea of using social media for this. Back then I didn't even have a Facebook account, but we created VRAR Vienna uh, in Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And we started posting there all our tests and yeah, all our experiments. And it was really cool to see how through, through this social media we could, we could connect with a lot of people that were wanting to implement virtual augmented reality here in Vienna. And yeah, this story of solving my own personal problem, let's say, of showing my friends how cool Vienna was in the past through augmented reality, allowed me to create my company, Virtual Augmented Reality Solutions, and to help other people and other companies to take advantage of extended realities, real potential, which is uh, the power to show more. And yeah, with this sentence, I want to finish my presentation. If you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask in German as well. Thank you very much. Um, if my history classes at school would have been that way, I would, would love history lessons. Um, do you plan to extend, I don't know, in, towards arts collections, for example, museums, or are you at this stage uh, restricted to, to historical stuff like this? Yeah, we are actually already working with a museum, and we already worked with artists. So yes, I think augmented reality and Virtual reality are tools that you can actually take advantage in almost any industry. And what we're doing is creating the content to, yeah, to help whoever wants to integrate virtual augmented reality to help them do, the, do this. And I have here, for example, as well, two, two small examples. If you happen to have a camera that can scan these codes, you can scan them right now. One is for Facebook and one is for Instagram. And you can take a look of yeah, a small example of augmented reality we created. Thank you for the presentation. And my question is how it actually really works. So if I want to do the tour, I'm downloading your app. And then is it like a map or how am I being guided? That's a question, and then it's like, so I would scan like a church or whatsoever and wait for a, a while, and then I would see the animated movie, or what, what would I physically see? Yeah, well, it works like this. You, you get from the tourism agency um, a bag with the, with the information, with the questions, and you get as well a smartphone, a special smartphone that has a 3D camera on it, so this smartphone has all the apps you will need in order to, yeah, to get the whole experience. And you go to, let's say, to one station in order to answer one question. And then on the, yeah, on the information sheet you get, you, you get the instructions of how it works. It actually works like you go to a place and there you just find, um, for example, uh, a sign or, or something, you will get this information in the, in, the, in, the, yeah, in the folder. And then you just scan this sign. And then the virtual objects will appear in their, 
in their place, and then you can start um, walking around them and exploring them and finding the answers actually to the questions through interacting with them. So yeah, you get a phone, a special phone with the apps from the company, and yeah, sadly, as I said, um, it's not possible to upload the apps to the App Store because the technology uh, used um, is not able in every phone right now. It's this 3D camera that not every phone has. And what was the, the second question? Well, I mean, the only part about augmented reality is like what I know is like that you scan a physical like a painting or whatsoever mm -hmm. and then you see the little movie animated sequence whatsoever. But you need to stand there and you cannot move around. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to scan it. Okay. So it's not that you can walk around and be like, oh, I'm seeing this and that. Or did you solve that? Yeah, we solved that problem. We're actu you're actually, with our app, you're actually to, uh, able to walk around and really, yeah, you have almost no limits. Yeah. And we're, we're doing this not with pictures. That's the, let's say, the mainstream augmented reality right now, that you just scan a picture and then it comes to life. But what we did is we create a, a 3D point cloud map of a whole place. So you actually scan in 3D the place, and that's why we, we're allowed then after to walk on, yeah, nearby, and you, you, you don't lose the tracking. It's not that you have the whole time to, to be pointing at the image. And that's, yeah, that's a key factor as well in our tour. Yeah, you get a phone. You get a, a special phone from the company, and that's everything you need, actually. You're not, we're not using augmented reality world glasses. We're, we're using it more or less like with the IKEA app, with the phone. Or, or, yeah, or with Pokemon Go. Um, where do you... I think it's starting. Okay, good. <laughs> In virtual reality. Excuse me? Where do you see the future of your company in, in virtual reality? You talked about augmented reality, but where do you see it in virtual reality? In virtual reality, yeah, we, we create the content and it re we can really create the content for almost anything you would like to. For example, we're working together with psycho psychotherapists mm -hmm. that use uh, virtual reality to treat patients with phobias and we are developing the, the simulations the virtual reality simulations for them so that they can treat with a vir virtual reality their patients. Mm -hmm. um, is this kind of stationary thing that you have um, pictures, one picture after the other, or is it um, quite, uh, could you follow a pipeline, for example, if you're doing for an event kind of quiz, um, and there is a pipeline system um, from the company, and uh, it's about following the pipeline yeah, and finding clues or anything. Is it possible to, to do re really a walkthrough and following different pipelines? Yeah, of course, that's possible as well. In this tour, we have uh, different stations where you go to the station, and in that station, you interact uh, through augmented reality with the objects. But it is possible as well to create uh, yeah, a pipeline, as you say. There are some limitations right now. It, it cannot be like really long, let's say, because you will lose tracking after some meters, but it is possible to find a solution so that every certain amount of meters you have another, let's say, tracker point. But yeah, it's possible. And I think in the future it's gonna be even easier because technology is always yeah, evolving and these kind of problems are going to be solved. I think. Yeah. Um, did you actually manage to find accurate documentation of all the architecture you wanted to replicate, or did you have to take some artistic liberties in order to fill in the gaps? Yeah, well, we managed to find a lot of information of, for example, yeah, all, the, all the buildings we reconstructed for this tour. But it's true that it's, I mean, I cannot assure to 100% that they actually look exactly like that. 
but there were a lot of information about these buildings and that's another reason why we decided to choose those buildings because we had so many information about them. There are other buildings that would have been interesting as well, but there is not much information about them, so we didn't, yeah. So you're saying if you um, rather skip over a building than giving an inaccurate representation of it. Uh, it you, you'll only take <coughs> buildings that you know enough about to actually give an accurate picture. Yeah, exactly. We, in this occasion, we, we decided to to only reconstruct buildings, we, we were pretty sure how they actually looked like in the past in order to give this, this value to the tour, that what you were looking at was actually not, not uh, something from our fantasy or our imagination. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much then. <laughs>